Hey there everyone, this is Danielle. I have two new games to look at. Uh, both of these released, well, I guess yesterday now. Um, I was planning to record both of them this evening, but I had a nap and it's now like 2am, so I'm probably just going to play one of them tonight and have another look at, have a look at the other one later today. <laughs> like once I've slept. Anyway, um, so yeah, we have, uh, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening here, which released yesterday. We also have Untitled Goose Game, which released yesterday. We're gonna look at Link's Awakening first. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about this version of the game. I have played the original game for, you know, the Game Boy. Um, I mean, I, I played it on the 3DS, so it was actually Link's Awakening DX, which was a re-release for the Game Boy Color, but otherwise pretty much the same as the original, I believe. It did add an extra dungeon, which had, like, colour-based puzzles, which was a bit rude if you think about it, because of colour blindness and all that. Um, but yeah, so this version, I haven't looked at any trailers or anything, I don't really know a whole lot about it, uh, except that it's based on the Game Boy Zelda game, which is quite good. Uh, it had some minor problems, in my opinion. Hopefully they will have been fixed in this remake, I'll mention them as we, as we come across them. So, uh, let's have a look. Uh, see how we do. Okay, we got some bubbles. We got, we got some ocean. Got some, some waves and stuff. Oh, this is nice. This is nicely animated. This is really pretty. Oh, there she goes. I believe in you, Link. Oh dear. Um. There's Marin. I assume that's Marin. Link have a snooze. Oh no! Wake up, Link! That beach is really pretty. <laughs> Look at the clouds! Oh, that's pretty. And there's the windfish egg. Oh, this looks really good. Press L plus R, okay. Uh, okay, so we get three files and an autosave. I think the original game had one file, which is a bit lacking. I don't remember though, it might have had three. Uh, we're gonna play on normal. Link is my name, that'll do. Uh, you can change it, but I'm glad they automatically put the name you want in there, because it's just the correct name to use. Oh, look how cute this is. What a relief. I thought you'd never wake up. You were tossing and turning. What? Zelda? No, my name's Marin. You must still be feeling a little woozy. You are on Koholint Island. Oh, look how cute this is. Oh my goodness. What's this thing? Is this a stand for something? It says piranha plant. Oof, this looks heavier than heavy. Your current strength won't cut it. Uh, this is actually one of the things I mentioned that was a problem in the original game. Uh, to uh, pick these up, you needed to get the power bracelet. Kind of like in... Um, Kind of like a Link to the Past with the power glove, but the power bracelet had to be equipped because the Jet Game Boy has so few buttons. Uh, I think they've probably fixed that because the Switch has more buttons and it says lift is an action on A button instead of being, you know, using a bracelet item to pick it up. They've probably fixed that. I don't know if we'll get the bracelet during my initial playthrough here. We'll see. Uh, let's, let's, uh, right over there. Does this stand for something? It says Goomba. Hmm. 
Follow the lane south to reach the beach where I found you. Since you washed ashore, lots of nasty monsters have been in the area, so be careful, okay? Well, Link, you finally snapped out of it. Name's Taran. Hope you're feeling better. What? How did I know your name? You think it's weird, eh? Well, I saw it back of the sh on the back of the shield. You got your shield back. Hold R to repel enemies with it. Okay, so this is definitely improved. Um, the shield, again, you had to equip it. So the fact that it's just on the R button now is much better. Uh... You can use R or ZR, by the way, so if you prefer to use the Z buttons, I do, then you can, so that's good. Uh, I do need that shield. Um, it is a mandatory item in this game. Uh, you'll see why you have to use it in a little bit. Ma Maid Village? Marbe Village? I'm not sure what it's supposed to be. One of those. Oh, look how pretty it is. Oh my gosh. There's a little chicken. So I don't have a sword yet. All I have is this shield here. Uh, I can pause, there we go. Okay, so here's the items menu, it looks good. Uh, it looks like I can set an item to X or Y, but I don't have any items yet, so I can't actually do that. Uh, over here we've got System, which looks very similar to the one from, um, from Breath of the Wild, although there's less options, obviously. Then we got our map over here. Which we also get with the select button. Not select, you know, minus. Uh, da -da -da -da. There's a chicken. There's the phone house. Let's go to the phone house. There's just a phone here. Check. Ring, ring. Hello, it's me, Ulrira. Ask me anything about the island. If you get lost, give me a call. You know, there is a library in the village that might have some good information for you. Talk to you later. Click. So yeah, um, these little phones are spread out throughout the game. They give you hints about stuff. Uh, you can actually go find old man Ulrira somewhere, and he's like really shy and wants you to talk on the phone instead, which is pretty cute. Uh, hello. Yahoo! I'm fine, and you? Cute. Uh, there's a chain chomp over there. This game's a little weird. <laughs> it's got chain chomps in it. <laughs> yep, yep. Also little puppies. Fox puppy dog things. They're cute. Da -da -da. Hello, little kid. Hey man, when you want to save, hit up the system screen. You get that by opening the sub screen with plus, then pressing R to get to the system screen. Uh, don't ask me what that means, I'm just a kid. So in the original version of the game, this kid told you how to save by... Uh, in Link's Awakening, you had to save by pressing all the buttons, is what they said. So A, B, start, select all at once. Um, this caused a bit of a problem because the Game Boy Color games, uh, like uh, Oracle of Seasons and Ages, pressing that same combination, if you want to save, you know, you've just been playing Link's Awakening and you want to save, actually resets the game. In those ones, you're supposed to save by going into the menu, like in this one. Can't lift up these. Oh, I need a sword or something. Uh, let's go get my sword. Uh, kind of annoyingly, you have to use the analog stick, even though the controls are mostly digital. Like, you can move slowly by tilting the stick just a little way, but you can only move in eight directions. Uh, and the D-pad does absolutely nothing, which is annoying. Uh, I feel like it should do something, but it doesn't. Got to use the analog. Uh, tail cave to the right, Tor Torumbo Shores south. We want to go to, ta to Torumbo Shores, so we're going to head that direction. That's an Octorok. And that's an Octorok. Um, we want to watch out for these. We don't have a weapon yet, remember. All we have is this shield, so we can't actually hurt them. Uh, but we want to get to the shores here. Uh, the reason we need our shield is because of these spiky things here. Uh, we can use our shield to push our way through them like this. If we didn't have the shield, there'd be no way to get past him. There we go. Ow. And that's how you reach sword. Here it is. Hoo -hoo. So you are the lad who owns the sword. Now I understand why the monsters decided to act so violently. 
A courageous lad has come to wake the windfish. It is said that you cannot leave the island unless you wake the windfish. You should now go north, the mysterious forest. I will wait for you there. Hoot. I'm a little annoyed that the game keeps calling me a lad. Like, I feel like they should have... They should be de-emphasizing that. You found your sword. It must be yours because it has your name engraved on it. You can swing it with B to attack any enemies in your path. Heck yeah, I got the sword. Heck yeah. So the sword, um, in the original Link's Awakening, because of the two buttons, you had to equip the sword as well. And you pretty much kept it equipped, which meant you only had one button to do other things with. Which was annoying. Uh, in this one, as you can see, the sword is always on B. Uh, like in Link to the Past, which is nice. And presumably other items go on X and Y, which is nice, because you get to use all the buttons. And I got some crabs here, we can, we can kill them. Not too much trouble. We also have a spin attack. Hi, monkey. But yeah, the monkey does attack, sort of. I don't know if that's supposed to be an attack or what. <laughs> there's a house here. There's a, there's a lizard fellow. Hello. Welcome to Saleh's House of Bananas. I'm Saleh, and this is my house. Actually, my hobby is collecting rare and unusual canned food. My brother is an artist, so I guess strange hobbies run in the family. Is being an artist strange? Like, I feel, I feel like it's less strange than collecting unusual canned food. <laughs> anyway, uh, we have our sword now, so we need to go to Tail Cave, uh, which you'll remember was in this general direction. You got a Guardian Acorn. It will reduce the damage you take by half. Uh, so Guardian Acorns, they're a temporary power-up. There's also one called a Piece of Power, which looks like a Triforce piece, and it doubles your damage. Uh, they're both temporary, which is kind of strange. It's a bit weird to get stuff like that in a Zelda game. It doesn't usually work that way. As you can see, yeah, I only took a quarter heart of damage when I got hit there instead of a half heart. So that's an improvement. Uh, these little holes, we'll be able to cross those later. Uh, we don't have the items we need to do that yet, though. I don't have any items yet, strictly. Uh, okay, here's Tail Cave. I think I need to get a key from somewhere. Huh? A keyhole here? It says Tail Keyhole. This is the first dungeon in the game. Uh, this is more of a traditional Zelda than Breath of the Wild. There are, like, dungeons that you have to do in pretty much a certain order. Uh, and this one is the first one, but we can't get into it yet because I forgot to get the key. Um, I forget whether the yeah there there are Pegasus boots in this game yeah. Again, you had to equip them. I'm guessing like the L button will be the Pegasus boots button once we get the ability to use them, which we haven't yet. Uh, here we are back in Marbe Village. Uh, we can go down this hole now. Uh, you might remember that Link to the Past had a couple of jumps like this. Link's Awakening has them too. <laughs> I'm really liking the visual style here. Ooh, piece of heart. You got a piece of heart. Press plus to open the subscreen and see. Yep, I can see it over there. There it is in the corner. Cool. Uh, this game had a couple of collectibles like that. There's also seashells, which we want to get if we can find some. So we're going to have to keep our eyes open for that. Uh, most of the seashells you find using the shovel, which is a required item in this game, uh, unlike in Link to the Past, where it's optional. I think it's optional. Here we are, a secret seashell. What do you do with it? Uh, for the moment, we'll just be collecting them. There's a spot you have to go to with the seashells that we probably can't reach just yet. Uh, there's Marin. Hi, Marin. Hi, Taryn went to the forest to look for toadstools, but I'd rather sing. Listen to this, it's called the Ballad of the Windfish. Cute. I love her. Look at that little baby. Look how, look how happy she is. Look at that big smile. I love her. <laughs> She's so cute. This is the shop, I think. 
Yep, it's the shop. Uh, you can see the shop sells a uh, shovel. Uh, we do need that shovel. If this game works like the original, we can steal the shovel. I'm just going to give that a quick try to see if it'll work the way I expect. Maybe. I don't want to actually do it. Um, because you usually want to buy the shovel and then steal the next item which shows up when you get the shovel. Uh, there's also a piece of heart there which we want. Um, but yeah, there's two items you need from the shop to complete the game. And the shovel is the first one. Pretty sure we can't go that way. To a cuckoo prairie. Can't cut down signs in this game, which is a little weird. Uh, you couldn't do it in Link to the Past either, but in that game you could pick up signs, and you can't in this one. Well, it seems that after you save, you will start at the last place you saved, unless it's a dungeon where you start at the entrance. I'm not really sure why that is, because I'm just a kid. Where's your animal kitty voice? Oh well, doesn't matter. Okay, I forget what you're supposed to do to get the tail key. Um... There's the fishing guy. There's a little fishing mini game you can do, but we probably won't do it right now. Gosh, this game is pretty. Uh, we can head this way, right? Mysterious forest. Moblins ahead. They're not friendly. Yeah, we can go this way now that we have the sword. Uh, I think the owl's gonna appear and give us a hint. The owl shows up a lot in this game. What? Oh, brave lad, on your quest to wake the dreamer. Welcome to the mysterious forest. Much of mystery you'll find on this uncharted Kohulint Island. I'm afraid you may find it a trifle difficult to leave the island while the windfish naps. By the by, have you ever visited the Tail Cave, which is south of the village? Go there with the key you find in this forest. The windfish is watching. What? They're saying lad a lot, and I don't like it. It's, it's very... cis-normative. That's a moblin. Ow. That's another moblin. That's another moblin. Uh, in the original version of this game, it was very, like, uh, grid-based. Like, you had one screen and it would scroll when you walked to the edge. In this version, it looks like it's continuous scrolling. Which is quite a bit different. Uh, here's a friend. As a raccoon, my nose is very sensitive to stuff like dust and powder. That's a hint. We have to get the magic powder and use it on the raccoon, but we don't have it yet. Ha <laughs> You're going to be lost, thanks to me. <laughs> Yeah, the raccoon won't let us continue on um, without the magic powder so that we can get rid of it, basically. It's gonna warp us around and stuff. Gosh, this game's pretty. I still wish we could use the D-pad to control it. I'm not sure why we can't. Maybe they'll patch that. Ow. Beware of floors with cracks, don't get too comfortable on them. Okay, got a treasure chest there which we probably can't reach. We can go this way though. Got some slimes. Okay, that's a piece of power, there we go. You got a piece of power, you can feel the energy flowing through you. So yeah, that temporarily doubles our damage until it wears out. Oh, we can push these. Okay. Okay. I think we can't reach that piece of heart because we need bombs to get rid of those skulls. If I recall correctly. There's a mushroom. You pick the toadstool. As you hold it over your head, a mellow aroma flows into your nostrils. I believe just like a link to the past, we can use that to get the magic powder. If I'm remembering correctly, which I might not be. How do I hit that guy? Ow. There we go. <laughs> 
Okay, we can't jump over that hole yet. Uh, so I guess we go back this way. Okay, let me see. I, I think, yeah, what we have to do is bomb those skulls. Uh, in order to get them out of the way. Which we can't do yet because we don't have any bombs. So, yeah, let's head the other way for now. I think we can get that chest back in the first room of this cave, though. That's not good. Yeah, you can break these uh these crystals with your sword. And you can just push the rocks out of the way. So we can get the chest. Yay! Purple rupee? 50 rupees, very nice. Yeah, we do need quite a few rupees because there's things the game requires you to buy. Or steal, I guess we could steal them. Be gay do crimes after all. Here's a fairy. Hello, fairy. Gosh, you're cute. <gasps> You've still got plenty of pep. Come see me when you feel like you can't go on. I assume a great fairy heals you. Uh, I forget whether they're actually in the original Link's Awakening or not. I think they are. I don't really remember. Okay, you just haven't punt poke your sword like that. Uh, we can't get into there yet. Because these rocks are immovable within until we get... I think it's the first power bracelet. I believe there are two levels of power bracelet, like in um, Link to the Past. Coholint Prairie. Okay, so we can't reach that. Uh, I mean, oh, okay, no, shield made of metal. We can't reach that. Uh, we can't go that way yet either. I haven't found this, the key to Tail Cave, which is a bit weird. Hello. Ah, it has the sleepy toadstool it does. We'll mix it up something in a jiffy, we will. Magic powder? It's all ready, it is. Take care, as there's not much there. Why not try a bit in my hut? You got some magic powder. Open the subscreen with plus and set it to either X or Y. Okay, so we need magic powder, as I mentioned. Uh, we're gonna use some on this... It didn't do anything. Is that supposed to do something? Maybe... Oh yeah, I can light torches with it, that's right. Good job, use it on your enemies and see what happens. If you run out, go to the forest, pick some toadstools and I will make you more. Come back without a toadstool, and you may have to pay a price for my leftovers. Uh, you can get uh, more magic powder in the dungeons and stuff as well. You don't actually have to come back here to get more. Unlike in um, Link to the Past, there's no magic meter in this game. So instead, you just have a finite supply of magic powder. A certain number of uses. So yeah, we have magic powder. Now we can use it on that raccoon from earlier. In order to get through here without getting teleported around. A uh, chest over there. Again, we can't cross those holes yet, so that's a little bit annoying. Okay, here's the raccoon. So we just use the magic powder on the raccoon, like this. Wow. Oh, it's a dude. <laughs> big nose, man. Taron, the last thing I can remember was biting into a big juicy toadstool. Then I had the darndest dream. I was a raccoon. 
Yeah, sounds strange, but it sure was fun. Okay, now we can keep going this way. Which is good, because up here is the chest we need. This has the tail key in it, I'm guessing. Yep, there it is, the tail key. Yay! Uh, Al? Yeah, Al. Ooh! Take the key and go to the tail cave. Retrieve the instrument that's hidden there. Go now! The windfish is waiting. What? Oh, gosh. This game is so cute. Check. Okay, so we have to go back through the forest this direction. Uh, again, we can't cross these holes yet, so we're going to have to just walk around them. Not a big deal, though. Uh, if this game is the same as the original, there is one upgraded sword we can get, uh, but not for a while. Let's just check our map here. Oh, that's really cute. What do these symbols mean? Shops? Oh, I see. You can hover over it and see what it does. That's nice. Zoom in. Uh, the original game was very grid-based. This, this map screen, like, had a bunch of grid squares on it. This version, it isn't grid-based, so it's just using a regular sort of map instead. It's nice. It's good. Okay, so we have the tail key, so we can go to tail cave now, which is, as I mentioned, the first dungeon in the game. Uh, it's just over here. Not too tricky. You got a piece of power, you can feel the energy flowing through you. Just like in the original game, it like tells you what those things do every time you get one, which is a little annoying, but whatever. You can see it launches enemies really far instead of just like hurting them normally, which is kind of funny. Here's the key. Open. Let's go to Tail Cave. There's several keys in the game like that for opening the different dungeons. I forget if every dungeon needs one or just some of them. But there's definitely like more than one. There's some extra keys you have to get. Anyway, Tail Cave, let's go. Level one, Tail Cave. Uh, if we look at the map, yeah, you can see this is a bit more grid oriented. Goodbye. Okay, a key. You got a small key. You can open a locked door. Ah. You got the compass. Now you can see where the chests and nightmare are hidden. The com this compass has a new feature. A tome will tell you if a key is nearby. So yeah, the compass shows you where the chests are, shows you where the boss is. It's called The Nightmare because this is a game about sleeping. Link's Awakening. And of course, this is about Link waking up the wind fish. It's not about Link waking up. Uh, so, really, like, Link's Awakening doesn't mean an awakening that belongs to Link. It means Link is awakening the wind fish. <laughs> Okay, I heard a tone, and I can see a little compass icon, so that's cool. Still works even if you can't actually, you know, hear the compass. Uh, I killed everything. Can I stand on this? There's a chest. Let's go. Ba -ba -ba -ba. You got a small key, you can open a locked door. We got two keys now. Uh, let's go this way. I want to find all the chests. Oh no, skeletons! Scary. There we go, there's a chest. There's also like a cutout there on the wall. That's like a one-way door sort of thing. At last, you've got a map. Press minus to look at it. Boop. Lots of information. I'm going to go the other way for the moment, though, because of the one-way door. Don't want to miss anything. Ow.
Goodbye, wormy friend. Uh, you can see there's a cracked wall over there, but I don't have any bombs yet, so I can't actually open that. Doo -doo -doo. You got a key! I have three keys and I haven't used any of them yet. Oop, oop, found something. A red rupee, that's worth 20 rupees. So you got 20 rupees, joy! Oh, this is really cute. I don't know how long I'm gonna play. I'm probably gonna finish this dungeon. Uh, and that'll be a bit over half an hour. It's been half an hour now, so that's probably a decent amount if I finish the first dungeon. Should give people a good idea of what the game's about. In the original game, uh, when you had your shield out, you would like lock the direction you're moving, so you'd walk backwards. You can see this doesn't happen in this game, so that's a little annoying. Um, suppose you could just do it like this with the sword. Uh, to get the same sort of behaviour. Uh, this is the other side of that one-way door we were looking at earlier. So you can see how it connects up. Uh, I guess I'll open this door. One of my keys, there we go. It looks like it auto-saved when I opened that door, so... The auto-save is quite, uh, enthusiastic. Um, can't see anything else in this room, so I guess I'll just keep going. Oh yeah, these are weird. You have to get them on the same, um, symbol, basically. Dang it. There we go. And then they explode and you get a prize. There we go. What's in here? You got a piece of cheese. Oh, it's a stone beak. Oh, right, yeah. There's one of these in each dungeon. And when you find it, you can use it to make the owl statues like this one talk to you. Turn aside the spined ones with a shield. So, yeah, there's all these owl statues. You can see they have no beak. So there's one stone beak in each dungeon that you can collect. You can see the dungeon items over there, you have the map, the compass, and the stone beak. Um, and yeah, that is in the original Link's Awakening as well. I think it's a pretty cool feature. Uh, that's all we can do over there for now, because we can't cross the gap just yet. So, we do have to go over to this other, uh, locked chest in this direction. Locked chest, that other thing, locked... what's it called? Oddly enough, you can see here that, um... It's still using a grid, even though it doesn't, like, look like a grid. You can see when I walk up to here, uh, that chest down there disappears because I'm crossing a grid line here-ish. Um, it's, it's an interesting way to implement things. Uh, watch out for that, there we go. Let's make our way through here. Make our way through here, there we go, there we go. Make our way through here, here's another stone beak. Which we can talk to. If there is a door that you can't open, move a square block. Alright. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, here are the spined ones that the other one mentioned, so we're just gonna flip these guys over like this. There we go, easy peasy. That should give us a staircase, okay. Wonder what this owl statue has to say. Turn aside the sponge with the shield. Yeah, we know that. Okay, side-scrolling area with Goombas. This is one of the interesting things about this game. Uh, the original Legend of Zelda also had these sorts of side-scrolling areas, but it didn't put Goombas in them. And this game does, which is interesting. Uh, we can't jump yet. So, we're gonna just try to drop onto them, uh, instead. You can see, yeah, Goombas can be killed by jumping on them. Even though this is 
Zelda. So that's it's an interesting design decision. <laughs> Uh, ba -ba -da -ba. There we go. Uh, you can see that there's like a three heart up there. We can't reach that because it's flying. It's a little bit in the air. But once we get this item... Yep, rock's feather. You got the rock's feather. It feels like your body is a lot lighter. So the feather uh, is an equipable item. I'm going to equip it like this, which lets us jump. So we can jump up to grab that. Uh, we'll also see magic powder that's available as little flying things like that in places where we need magic powder. And we can platform, platform around now and cross holes and stuff by jumping over them. Like this hole here, for example. Let's make sure I didn't miss any rooms. Uh, looks good to me. Okay, we'll go get that chest there, and then we'll make our way over towards the nightmare. That guy can also jump, so, you know, watch out for that. Uh, you can't jump over these, I believe. Yeah, so I have to go around. You mostly can't jump over things except for holes, uh, so you got to watch out for that. A guardian acorn. Reduce the damage you take by half. So yeah, uh, we just want to jump over there, unlock this block with one of our keys. We have to go up here and get this chest. Which is the big key. Oh, the nightmare key. Now you can open the door of the nightmare's lair. Uh, the nightmare key doesn't show up on the list of items in this game, which is interesting. because uh, it shows the stone beak instead. I believe the original worked like that as well. Okay, so we can now jump over this gap and reach this room, which we couldn't before. Uh, I think this is a mini boss. Forget what happens here in the original, whether the enemy looks quite the same. It looks very weird. There we go. Easy enough. Uh, there's a fairy. A super cute looking fairy. Look at that cute fairy! <laughs> uh, we get a portal here, which is a two-way portal. Uh, you can use it to just go back to the beginning of the level if you want. Just by standing in it like this. Um, like that, and it leaves you a shortcut here, which lets you jump forward in the dungeon very quickly. Uh, when you come back later, if you want to come back later. You don't usually have to in this game. Eek! Okay, so we've got a staircase here. Let's head down. Oh, that's creepy. Spooky, scary skeletons. That was cool. Okay, and that door there is the nightmare key door, so it's gonna open that up. And let's go fight the boss. I forget what the boss is. Oh, right, it's this guy. Bzz, bzz, outsider. Moldorm. I forget whether Moldorm was actually the boss in the original game. Anyway, it's Moldorm. So, um, yay. Of course, Moldorm was in Link to the Past as one of the bosses, and you couldn't jump in that game, so... Finding Moldorm again with jumping is a little weird. <laughs> it's not too tricky to beat. Heart container, give me that. The heart containers are optional in this game. You can see the exit already open before I grab this. You got a heart container. You mix number of hearts increase and your health has been refilled too. 
and here's the first instrument. So yeah, these are the MacGuffins you have to get. You have to get all the instruments, and basically you need to play the Ballad of the Windfish with them. You got the Full Moon Cello! Swamp. <laughs> it's hinting about where you need to go next. The second dungeon is in the swamp. A path opens in the blooms.
Oh, <laughs> 